Local scientists have made an exciting discovery on the seafloor along the Cascadia subduction zone. That's the same zone that could someday give Western Washington the big one, a 9.0 earthquake. Scientists have just made a groundbreaking revelation that could change everything we thought we knew about the Cascadia subduction zone. For decades, experts believed they had this earthquake-prone region figured out, but a stunning new study suggests we've been looking at it all wrong. What does this mean for our understanding of the next catastrophic event? And are we even prepared for what's coming? This discovery could rewrite history, challenge long-held beliefs, and raise serious questions about our safety. Buckle up, because the truth about the Cascadia subduction zone is more shocking than we ever imagined. The Cascadia subduction zone, a vast 1,000 kilometer long fault stretching from Northern California to Vancouver Island, is one of the most geologically dynamic and potentially hazardous regions on Earth. This tectonic boundary marks the collision of the Juan de Fuca Plate and the North American Plate, where the oceanic plate is being forced beneath the continental plate in a process known as subduction. The immense pressure and friction generated along this boundary have the capacity to unleash some of the largest earthquakes ever recorded, known as megathrust earthquakes. These events, often accompanied by devastating tsunamis, have shaped the landscapes and histories of the Pacific Northwest and continue to pose a significant risk to millions of people living in the region. For decades, scientists and disaster preparedness experts have regarded Cascadia as a high-priority area for research and mitigation efforts. Predictions about its seismic future have been based largely on the geological record, which has provided evidence of massive earthquakes occurring roughly every 200 to 800 years. These catastrophic events, collectively referred to as the big one, are considered inevitable, with some experts suggesting the region is overdue for its next seismic disaster. However, a recent study has introduced a disruptive new perspective, challenging the foundation of earthquake prediction in Cascadia. The cornerstone of this predictive framework has been the analysis of turbidite layers, sediment deposits found on the ocean floor believed to be triggered by underwater landslides during past earthquakes. These layers have long been considered reliable markers of Cascadia's seismic history, but this new research reveals significant flaws in their interpretation, casting doubt on the geological record itself. If these sediments are not exclusive indicators of seismic activity, as the study suggests, then the timelines and patterns derived from them could be misleading, forcing scientists to reevaluate what we know and don't know about the Cascadia subduction zone. For decades, the foundation of earthquake prediction in the Cascadia subduction zone has been rooted in the study of turbidite layers, sediment deposits found on the ocean floor. These layers are created by underwater landslides, which in turn were believed to be triggered by the intense ground shaking of major earthquakes. By analyzing these deposits, scientists have constructed a timeline of past seismic activity spanning thousands of years. The method seemed straightforward and reliable. Each turbidite layer was thought to represent a single earthquake event. By measuring the thickness, composition, and distribution of these sediment layers across the Cascadia margin, researchers could infer the timing and magnitude of past quakes. This record provided a crucial tool for estimating the recurrence intervals of megathrust earthquakes, which were believed to strike the region roughly every 200 to 800 years. These estimates shaped both scientific understanding and public policy, forming the backbone of disaster preparedness plans for communities along the Pacific Northwest coast. The prevailing belief in the scientific community was that turbidite layers offered a near-perfect record of Cascadia's seismic past. Their geographic spread across the fault line seemed to corroborate the idea that these layers were directly linked to tectonic activity. By correlating these sediment deposits with data from coastal uplift, subsidence patterns, and even historical tsunami records, scientists created a comprehensive picture of Cascadia's earthquake history. However, this seemingly robust framework is now being questioned. New research has cast doubt on the assumption that turbidite layers are exclusively tied to seismic activity. Instead, it appears that other processes, such as underwater landslides triggered by storms, volcanic activity, or ocean currents, may also contribute to the formation of these layers. This revelation undermines the accuracy of the earthquake timeline derived from turbidite analysis, suggesting that the method may not be as definitive as once thought. 
This paradigm shift challenges decades of research and raises critical questions about the reliability of past predictions. If turbidite layers are not a precise record of seismic events, scientists may need to rethink how they interpret the geological history of the Cascadia subduction zone and explore alternative methods to predict the region's future seismic behavior. Using a newly developed algorithm, researchers were able to analyze these sediment deposits with an unprecedented level of precision, revealing correlations, or lack thereof, between the layers and seismic activity. The results were both unexpected and troubling. Many of the turbidite layers traditionally attributed to earthquakes did not consistently align with known seismic events. While turbidites have been invaluable in understanding Cascadia's past, this new data shows that they may not be as definitive as we once thought, the lead author stated. It's a wake-up call to revisit our assumptions and refine our methods. The new algorithm employed in this research was designed to assess subtle differences in sediment composition, distribution patterns, and depositional environments. It revealed inconsistencies in the temporal and spatial distribution of the turbidite layers, further supporting the idea that many of these deposits could not be conclusively linked to earthquakes. If turbidite layers are not a definitive record of earthquakes, the recurrence intervals calculated for the Cascadia subduction zone may be inaccurate. This could have profound implications for disaster preparedness. The idea of a clock ticking down to the next big one becomes far less certain if the geological record is not as clear-cut as previously believed. Emergency planning efforts often rely on worst-case scenarios informed by earthquake recurrence intervals. With this new study, the ability to predict the timing of the next catastrophic event becomes murkier. Are we overdue for the big one? Or has the timeline been misunderstood entirely? So, if we got it all wrong, how can we predict earthquakes now, especially the big ones? What other parameters can be considered? Predicting earthquakes, especially megathrust events like the big one, is inherently challenging because of the complex and dynamic nature of tectonic processes. If traditional methods, such as relying solely on turbidite layers, are flawed, scientists can turn to a combination of alternative approaches and advanced technologies to improve earthquake prediction and hazard assessment. Here are some key parameters and methods that can be considered real-time monitoring of tectonic activity is a crucial method for understanding and predicting earthquakes. By using Global Positioning System GPS, sensors, scientists can detect minute movements of tectonic plates, which may indicate the buildup of stress along faults. For instance, slow slip events, silent, non-destructive fault movements, often occur before larger quakes. Seismographs, which detect smaller precursor earthquakes or tremors, also provide critical data about increasing stress in fault zones. Additionally, strain meters measure the Earth's crust's deformation in real time, offering vital clues about where stress is accumulating. Given that much of the Cascadia subduction zone lies underwater, seafloor observatories play an essential role in earthquake research. Seafloor pressure sensors detect subtle pressure changes caused by crustal movements or fluid shifts, while ocean bottom seismometers measure seismic activity directly on the ocean floor, revealing previously unrecorded tectonic activity. Hydrothermal fluid monitoring, which tracks changes in the chemical composition of fluids released at seafloor faults, can also indicate stress or movement in the fault system. Geological and geophysical analysis provides additional insights into earthquake prediction. By exploring alternative geological records, such as coral uplift, coastal marsh subsidence, or tree rings, scientists can reconstruct past earthquake histories beyond turbidite layers. Variations in Earth's magnetic field or gravity, known as magnetic and gravitational anomalies, can signal shifts in subsurface structures, indicating stress buildup. Machine learning and big data analytics offer transformative tools for identifying patterns in seismic activity. By analyzing vast datasets, machine learning algorithms can uncover trends or anomalies that might otherwise be missed. These algorithms also monitor subtle changes in the Earth's crust, such as micro-seismicity, gas emissions, or crustal deformation, which could precede major earthquakes. Geochemistry is another promising area of research. Increases in radon gas levels in groundwater, often released through fractures in the Earth, have been observed before some earthquakes. Similarly, variations in subsurface heat flow, detectable through satellites or ground-based thermal sensors, may indicate tectonic stress. Electromagnetic signals provide another avenue for earthquake prediction. 
Some studies suggest that electromagnetic anomalies, potentially caused by changes in rock properties under stress, may precede earthquakes. Satellite-based sensors have also detected ionospheric disturbances that correlate with tectonic activity, although the exact mechanism remains unclear. Subduction zone-specific phenomena are particularly important for understanding the Cascadia subduction zone. Mapping the segments of the fault that are locked and building stress versus those that are creeping without major quakes can help identify where the next rupture is likely to occur. Additionally, studying tsunami sediment deposits along coastal areas can refine our understanding of earthquake-generated tsunamis and their recurrence intervals. Interdisciplinary approaches are essential for advancing earthquake research. Indigenous oral histories often contain detailed accounts of past earthquakes and tsunamis, providing valuable context to scientific records. Social sciences also play a critical role in enhancing preparedness efforts, focusing on community education, evacuation planning, and infrastructure resilience. Laboratory experiments and computational modeling complement field studies by simulating tectonic stress and fault dynamics in controlled environments. Rock friction studies provide insights into how and when rocks break under pressure, while computer models simulate stress accumulation and release along fault lines to identify high-risk areas and potential rupture scenarios. Finally, collaboration and data sharing among international seismic networks enable scientists to compare findings, refine predictive models, and deepen their understanding of earthquake processes worldwide. This collective effort is vital for developing more accurate and reliable methods for forecasting seismic events. The timing of the next major earthquake or volcanic eruption in the Cascadia subduction zone remains uncertain, as predicting exact dates for such events is beyond current scientific capabilities. However, recent studies and historical data provide some context about the potential risks. The Cascadia subduction zone has a well-documented history of producing megathrust earthquakes. The most recent event, in 1700, was a magnitude 9.0 earthquake that caused widespread destruction along the Pacific Northwest coast and triggered a massive tsunami that impacted Japan. Geological records suggest that these megathrust earthquakes occur roughly every 200 to 800 years, with an average interval of around 500 years. Based on this timeline, the region is considered to be in the window of concern as it has been over 320 years since the last major quake. However, recent studies, including those questioning the reliability of turbidite records as precise indicators, have added complexity to these estimates. The exact recurrence interval depends on numerous factors, including stress accumulation along the fault and interactions between the locked and creeping segments of the subduction zone. GPS and other monitoring data suggest that parts of the Cascadia Fault are locked and accumulating stress which increases the potential for a major rupture. Slow slip events, which are silent fault movements, have been detected in the region and may be precursors to larger seismic activity, but their role in triggering megathrust earthquakes is not yet fully understood. While the Cascadia subduction zone is primarily associated with its potential to unleash devastating megathrust earthquakes, it also plays a critical role in fueling the volcanic activity of the Cascade Volcanic Arc. This arc is a chain of volcanoes stretching from Northern California to British Columbia, formed by the subduction of the oceanic Juan de Fuca Plate beneath the continental North American Plate. As the Juan de Fuca Plate dives into the Earth's mantle, immense heat and pressure cause the melting of rock, producing magma that rises to the surface and feeds the region's volcanoes. The Cascade Range is home to some of North America's most active and iconic volcanoes, including Mount Saint, Helens, Mount Rainier, Mount Hood, Mount Shasta, and Mount Mazama, site of Crater Lake. These volcanoes have erupted multiple times over the past several thousand years with varying degrees of explosiveness. Mount St. Helens, for example, is infamous for its catastrophic 1980 eruption, which devastated the surrounding region, killed 57 people and released massive amounts of ash and gases into the atmosphere. Although volcanic eruptions are not directly triggered by subduction zone earthquakes, both are driven by the same tectonic processes. The slow and continuous movement of the plates builds stress along faults, which can result in earthquakes, and generates heat and pressure deep within the Earth's crust, leading to magma formation. 
This shared origin underscores the intricate connection between earthquakes and volcanism in Cascadia, even if their occurrences are not simultaneous. Volcanologists employ a range of techniques to monitor signs of volcanic activity in the Cascadia region. These signs, known as volcanic unrest, often precede eruptions and provide critical warnings. One key indicator is ground deformation, which occurs when magma moves beneath the surface, causing the Earth to bulge or shift. Using GPS sensors and satellite-based radar imagery, scientists can detect even minute changes in the terrain that might signal magma movement. Another crucial sign is increased seismicity, as earthquakes often occur near a volcano when magma forces its way through rock. Seismographs placed around the Cascade volcanoes record these quakes, providing valuable data on the depth, intensity, and location of magma movement. Gas emissions are another important signal. As magma approaches the surface, it releases gases such as carbon dioxide, CO2, and sulfur dioxide, SO2, which can be measured using ground-based sensors or aerial surveys. Changes in the quantity and composition of these gases can indicate the likelihood of an impending eruption. At present, there is no evidence of imminent volcanic activity directly tied to the Cascadia subduction zone. However, the Cascade Range remains an area of constant surveillance due to its history of eruptions and the potential consequences of renewed activity. For example, Mount Rainier, although currently dormant, poses significant risks due to its proximity to populated areas and its extensive glacial cover. An eruption could trigger massive lahars, destructive volcanic mudflows, that would cascade down river valleys, threatening towns and cities below. Similarly, Mount St. Helens remains the most active volcano in the Cascade Range, having experienced its most recent eruption cycle from 2004 to 2008. Scientists continue to monitor it closely for signs of reawakening. Mount Hood, near Portland, Oregon, also shows signs of geothermal activity and is considered a potentially active volcano. While no one can predict exactly when the next megathrust earthquake will occur, most geologists agree that it is a matter of when, not if. Current research suggests the probability of a magnitude 8.0 to 9.0 earthquake occurring in the Cascadia subduction zone within the next 50 years is around 10 to 37 percent, depending on the location along the fault. The southern section, near Northern California, is thought to have a slightly higher risk because it experiences earthquakes more frequently than the northern section. Given the uncertainties, the focus remains on preparation, rather than prediction. Governments, scientists, and communities in the Pacific Northwest are investing in seismic monitoring systems like ShakeAlert, an earthquake early warning system, and conducting public education campaigns to ensure residents are ready to respond when an earthquake or tsunami strikes. Strengthening infrastructure and improving emergency response plans are also critical steps in mitigating the potential impacts of the big one. If you found this exploration insightful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on more groundbreaking discoveries and the science shaping our world. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. How do you think we can best prepare for the challenges Cascadia may bring? Until next time, stay safe, stay curious, and as always, Thanks for watching.